In today's video, learn how to do fingerprinting of web servers and web applications to do recon and hopefully make your attacks more successful. Web applications play a major a major role in today's modern online world and knowing how to attack them is an increasingly valuable skill. But the key to a successful attack is always good recon since it's easier to be focused and efficient with more information that you have. There are many fingerprinting tools out there. We have HTTP print, web attack, web tech, sorry, and others. But there are even more that can aid us in our reconnaissance tasks. So today's technology, uh, modern web app technologies have become more complex because gone are the days of simple websites that use HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. Today, frameworks dominate the landscape. We have mm, more types of databases, modular approaches to modern web app de development, and complicated web applications that come with more data. So there are now more, more types of database than ever. We have MySQL, SQL Server, and Oracle that are still around. We have new players like PostgreSQL, MongoDB that are also gaining popularity. As far as frameworks go, JavaScript based ones are arguably the most popular. We have React, Angular, Node that continue to be widely used. In the PHP arena, we have Symfony, we have K, Claravel, we have Django and Flask that both tried and true frameworks built on Python programming language. And of course, there's Microsoft's ASP.NET and not to forget Ruby on Rails. So the first tool that we are going to take a look at today for fingerprinting web applications and servers is called Network. I don't know if you have heard of it, but Network is, Netcat is very, very popular. It's a popular networking tool used to troubleshoot and communicate via TCP IP. For most hackers, the, the immediate thing that comes to mind when, when using Netcat is reverse shells. But it can also be used to fingerprint web servers. So today let's take a look at how we can use Netcat to fingerprint a web server. We use google.com as our target. So I can do nc google.com then port 80 because that's where the web server runs on. Then it will seem like uh, there's nothing going on. Now we have to issue a command here. In this case, a get request. Okay. So I can do get then slash forward HTTP slash forward 1.1, the version of HTTP. Then the same you can do again host. Now we are going to specify the host. The host will be google.com. Then uh, press enter twice and you should see a response. So we have some information here. We have a response code 301 moved permanently. We have a location here, content type, date. We have an expiry date. We have the type of server here, GWS. We have a content length, XSS protection, X, X frame options, and all that. So we have, a, I can tell that you have a 301 here because Google uses HTTPS. And remember, HTTPS runs on port 443. Okay, but you can also see the type of server here and some header information. So th this 301 is a HTTP status code, sorry. And these status codes indicate whether a specific HTTP request has been successfully completed. So responses are always grouped in five classes. We have informational responses that go with 100. So if you get a 100 to 199 in between, that's an informational response. If it's a 200 to 299, that indicates a successful response. Then if it's if it's in the range 300 to 399, that's a redirection response. 
if it's a 400 to 499 that's a client error response if it ranges in the 500 to 599 that's a server error response okay so it's good to know these status codes and their meaning now uh i can control see to clear that let me just clear the screen so i hope you now know how to do some simple so you can always switch the goal.com put any target that you want then the port will always be 80 or 443 that's where the web server t tends to run on so you can do during your free time you can do that and check if you get different responses so the next tool that let me clear the screen the next tool that we are going to use is called what web what web it's used to fingerprint web applications and servers so it's a scanner specifically designed to gather information about web, a web, about a web application or server. Okay. So in my terminal, I can do what? What? Web? I can do what web? So in the description, it's a next generation web scanner developed by Andre Houghton. These are the options. We have to specify a target, URL, host names, IP addresses, file names, or IP ranges. We can set the aggression level okay we can list plugins too then if you want a verbose output just like nmap you can use the switch dash v so i'm going to do what web google.com so uh what web google.com so it's going to give us some brief information about google.com so just like uh, NCAT, we have a 301 moved permanently. We have the country of origin, United States, the, H the type of HTTP server, GWS. We have the, the IP address here. We have a redirect location. It redirects to HTTP google.com. We have a title here. Then XRAM options, IP, HTTP server, HTML5, country of origin and all that information okay so we just basically getting the same information just like we did on you when you're using netcat now i can also do let me do my site what web eh techniques kenya the tiki okay so uh we also have a uh, 301 the country of origin is united states so my site is hosted on blogger the popular platform that is owned by google.com so i'm i'm also using a google server http we have a http type of server is ghs redirect location eh techniques kenya dot tk you see here i'm using blogger we have a status code of 200. I'm also using Bootstrap, JavaScript. Okay, we have the title of the site, EH Techniques Kenya, and an IP here. Okay, so this this the this is the called header information, basically telling us about the site, the web server, the web technologies behind it, the IP address, and the country of origin. Okay. Now, uh, let me go to the next tool that we are going to use today. Okay, the next tool is, we are going online now. I'm going to switch to my browser. Now I can do, so the next tool we are going to do is called Wapilizer. It's, a, it's, a, it's a browser add-on. So what browser add-ons are just uh, these tools that are used to provide more functionality, but they are browser based. That means they run on browsers. So if I do, I don't know, it's Wapilizer. Wap, no, Wapilizer. I'm using Firefox, so I can do Firefox, sorry, add-on. Okay, now I can click on that link. I'm going to install it, add it to Firefox. Mm. 
here click add let it run even private okay wapileza has been installed it's right here now so for example let me go to youtube let me go to youtube now if i click on it okay no okay let me reload it the page so basically what wapaleza does it tries to identify the technologies that a website uses when you visit that page now if i click on it i can see the technologies behind youtube the javascript frameworks that are using polymer security they using recapture font scripts they have google font api javascript libraries jump hammer.js they are using http2 if i click on more information now you'll have to pay for it okay or get an api key so this itself is enough information let me go to let me go to another site okay let me go to my site here okay let me reload it you can see already it's trying to identify the technologies you can see that i use blogger font scripts i use font awesome google font icons i'm using http2 the type of web server is OpenGSC by Google. I have programming languages Java and Python, CDN, Google hosted libraries, advertising. I'm using Google AdSense, JavaScript libraries, UI frameworks. I'm using Bootstrap and all that kind of information. So it's an extremely easy way to gather information about target while manually enumerating web pages. Okay. Now the next tool, let's go to the next tool. So uh online. So let's let's go to some sites now. So our the final method you'll use to fingerprint web apps and servers is arguably the easiest one. We can do it entirely online. So all you have to do on this site is apply the website or host and all the technologies and frameworks in use will be identified. The first site that I'm going to use is built with. Yep, built with technology lookup. So we can simply enter the target and it will create a technology profile for us. Now I can do HTTPS, put my site, htechniqueskenya.tk. I hope it's correct. Okay, let's look it up. I have to complete a cup uh capture okay i'm not a robot crosswalks we don't have crosswalks yeah we do have chimneys here okay so we have the widgets we have google font api we have font awesome yeah 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 the same same information that got the content delivery networks bootstrap the type of audio content managing system cms we have blogger we also use google api for advertising we use google adsense you see the same information that you'll get from the wapalizer a browser add-on the same same information here okay uh let me go down go back sorry let's try to look up another site or i can just do google.com let's try to look up the tool com so scrolling down we can see some of the technologies used by my site okay so this is how how simple it is to do uh, how to think simplest simplest way to do a fingerprint using builtwith.com it's a great site for doing recon and all that kind of reconnaissance tasks okay so the next fingerprinting site is w3 text w3 text open a new tab here so w3 
politics. So I I came I came to know of this site lately. I was I wasn't even aware that this site existed. Okay. So just like uh, builtwith.com, W3 Tex you just have to supply a URL and it will give us an overview of the web technologies in use. Okay. So you have a short description there, worldwide web technologies. Okay, content manages content managing systems that are more popular. We have WordPress that takes forty three percent, and all this uh, kind of information. Okay, so sites info. So what where we can go to sites? Okay, now I can do. HTTPS, HTTPS, www. dot eh, techniques, Kenya. dot tk. eh, no, no. Okay, let's look it up now. Okay, so W3 has not yet crawled this site. Let it go ahead and try to crawl this site for for information or web technologies. So I hope it's not going to take a lot of time. Okay, so we have a this we have a website background. We have a description on home page EH Techniques Kenya. Uh, and sadly, I'm not in the top 10 million websites. It's okay. Uh, the content management system that I use is Blogger. Okay, it's a hosted blog publishing system owned by Google. The server-side programming language in use is Python. The client-side programming language is JavaScript. We have a JavaScript library, jQuery, CSS framework. The web server is Google Web Server. Okay, this kind of information, SSL certificate authority, global sign, okay, social widgets in use, Twitter, Facebook, site elements, and all this kind of information. So guys, reconnaissance is a, is a very, very important area of ethical hacking. The more information that you have, the more probability of you uh, successfully exploit exploiting a target, the more information the better. Hope you have learned something today. Hope to see you in the next video. But remember to subscribe, like and share my videos. More and more content coming up. Thank you and see you in the next video.